public opinion to be enlightened. Press and radio reporting should be balanced. There should be sources of information with opposing points of view available in every community. The environment should make it possible. Newspaper, many things. They tell us what is happening in our own community and in other communities all over the world. They tell us in news stories, like this one. Age 10 is here. It is locked into place on the press. Warning light, the presses are starting to roll. The presses roll slowly at first, so the press men can make sure everything is working properly. This plate is printing the yellow sun. Then the black part of page 10 is printed over it. The press also folds the papers and it cuts them apart. Each page is carefully inspected. All right, full speed ahead. The press men check the machines constantly. The printed papers are bundled for delivery. They go down the chute to the delivery trucks. Newspapers are sold on the streets Newspapers are delivered to homes. They are Today, in print and by the spoken word, our American English language is spread throughout the world. A language that has grown and changed faster at first.
London stands still. Business, big and little, ceases until the teapot is empty. this chap to the list of un... The war is over. Six years of suffering, sacrifice and death have ended. 72 months of separation and anguish have come to a close. More than 300 weeks... A little more time to get to their offices write their stories, put them on the wires, and let all America share in that press conference. And as these stories about the President's conference are written and wired and telephoned and broadcast to the ends of the earth, as they are rushed to the roaring presses of the world, one has dramatic evidence of America's traditional freedom of the press, a majestic principle which goes hand in hand with those other basic democratic traditions, freedom of speech, and freedom of religious worship. And so we leave the White House filled with the inspiration that comes. This fugitive must be found dead or alive. And $25,000 reward will be paid to the citizen who provides the information for this arrest. On behalf of the police and federal agents, I ask the cooperation of the public in bringing Lepke to justice. And off the presses rush millions of posters offering a New York reward of $25,000 for Lepke, dead or alive. The federal government has put up another 5,000. Posters flooding the country give his description as 5 feet 5 and a half inches tall, 42 years old, piercing eyes, large blunt nose, slight dimple on left cheek. If you recognize Lepke, notify the New York Police Department or District Attorney Tom Dewey. Alan said... Want to buy a post, mister? He died. There was another kid with a new bicycle. When he came past your house, he rode no hands while he folded the evening paper into a block and threw it against your door. You used to jump when you heard the bang. You said, Someday I'm going to give that kid a good talking to. He died. people know of the fire hazards of gasoline and other flammable fluids, but have not grasped the control to freedom, to wipe out their religion and culture. Newspapers were filled with lies and distortions, and still are. Anti-Western and anti-American cartoons. It is made every day in keeping the Donna Street record of American business constantly alive for the confidential and exclusive use of the granters of credit. Those 6,500 changes are a sensitive barometer of the daily change, great and small, in American business. Every two months, the huge Dun and Bradstreet reference book is revised. Names of manufacturers, wholesalers, 300,000 changes for the 60-day period. <laughs> the medium of 65 publications in 14 languages.
let us go from this place prepared to make a stand, prepared to carry this message in every way possible to all the people of this community, to all the people of this state, to all the people of this nation. When they abandoned Norway, we had relied on government for national preparedness. Now we find we are pitifully unprepared for the rigors of modern warfare. We were told by the administration itself that rearmament is an industrial problem, that industry must be relied upon to make America strong. How then can this problem be met by an administration which has proved itself utterly inefficient and inept in dealing with industry? An administration which has persistently shown distrust and enmity toward industry. We were told by the administration itself that our national defense program depends upon unity. Yet the whole history of the administration has been one of disunity. Disunity of government and industry and labor and capital. Yes, rearmament is a problem of gigantic industrial production. An enemy had destroyed one third of our factories and machines, destroyed one third of our homes, laid waste to one third of our farms. We wouldn't take it lying down. We would do something about it. We would make a stand. Our attention is turned away from what is happening here at home. And yet the wealth of our own country is being wasted and destroyed just as surely as if we had a war within our own boundaries. Remember, it isn't someone else's wealth that's being and into our own pocketbooks. We've learned that it takes a lifetime to recover from it. And yet in eight years, government has spent almost twice as much as all our wars combined. From such a staggering sum spent over a period of eight years, we would naturally expect some worthwhile results. Well, let's see what we got for our $55 billion. Government promised to help farmers. Most Americans came to believe that a comparatively small navy was protection enough for their isolated sea coasts. But in the middle of the 30s, events in Europe and Asia began to change America's thinking. She began to prepare to throw her weight into the world's struggle against fascism and aggression. And by September.